On the 6th of January, 2007, the Alien Nation gang came over to spend an afternoon with my wife Susie, my daughter Katie, and me, Kenny Johnson. Makeup, starlight filter, some smoke, some gauze. Like, if I just do that, I look really good. Okay, hi, Gary. How are you? Hi. You really had things written on the set? Oh, yeah. I would put them on, on, on uh, actors. put them on my forehead. On guest actors. I'd put them on there. I'd put, put them on his forehead so I didn't have to look away too far. I never put them on me. Let me tell you. He's not saying, who's the gorgeous girl? I was like, it's the little girl from the show. She looked amazing. She looked incredible. Isn't she gorgeous? How are you, darling? Haven't seen you in ages. You didn't even dye your hair or anything, did you? I thought, man, you'd like to put a little color in it. Hey, Gary, Gary, I have one word for you. It's... Sit up straight. Clean laps. Okay, we're rolling. Common marker, four cameras. The Alien Nation slate from 1989, April the 12th of 1989. I remember that year. Marker. <laughs> now, let me tell you, the first thing I remember, I sold the show to Fox. That was your first mistake. That was my first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> the first call I made was to Eric Pierpoint. And a good call it was. Do you remember getting the call? Yeah, there? I remember getting the call, and I said, that, uh, Kenny, I would love to do it. James Conn is terrific, and all this, is, you know, let me look at the movie and all that. So I said, it and said, no, no, no. You want, you're going to play the alien. <laughs> so I said, wait a minute, let me look at it again. <laughs> but yes, I do remember that. It was a very happy day for uh, me. I met Eric in 1984 um, when I was ca uh, casting a show called Hot Pursuit. Uh, I'd already cast the lady, leading lady, Carrie Keene, who was guest starred for us on, on the lead of two of the Alien Nation movies. And I had, as always, had been reading with everybody. And there was Eric sitting down reading the same scene that I had been reading over and over again. And he's getting laughs where I never got <laughs> <laughs> The second call I made was to Jeffrey Marcus. I was doing regional theater in Florida, and you called and said, I wrote a role for you in my new series. And I was so excited, and I said, who? And I was expecting this romantic lead, and you said, <laughs> It's a retarded alien janitor <laughs> named Albert Einstein. <laughs> and, and, and you'll be as, perfect. As, for I, as, I, as I recall, there was a long pause on the phone, and, Jer and Jeff said, you know, regional theater's really pretty good. For <laughs> so those are the only two roles that no one auditioned for. That would take. No, that would take. <laughs> Susie saw Michelle's picture when we were going through potential actresses, and she said, wow, she would look so great in a hair, <laughs> you know? Do you remember the audition? Yeah. And there's this wild man going, okay, let's read. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is the producer. This is Ken Johnson. So I, I just, okay. Um, and, and we did the scene. And what scene did we do? Do you remember? The scene where I turn around at the top of the stairs and start protecting my daughter. Well, that I didn't want to send her to school. No! Don't start! I don't want my kids to go through this anymore, do you hear me? I'd rather live in that slack town hubble. For the rest of my life. There that's you go. from the pilot, right. Not that we remember the words, it was only yeah. 18 years, <laughs> years ago. Years ago. <laughs> you know, I've always tried to read with the actors because it gives me a chance to act. Yeah. You know? So I, I try to make actors comfortable so that they can do their best work. I think to work. this day you're the only director I've ever read with. I can't. No, no, call no, that director ever. Really? No. no. It's, 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 not that it's rare. I think it's non-existent. Oh. There's no personal interaction. Oh, it's very cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ronnie, I didn't know they were bringing you in, and then suddenly there you were. The, the project you worked on with Jeffrey that you got to know him on was Senior Trip, a movie that you co-wrote, which was uh, 25 years ago. <laughs> and we were kids. And uh, Jim Weisenbach, who was an actor in that production with Jeff and I, became an agent. And he'd gotten the breakdown for Alienation. He called me up and he said, our old friend Kenny Johnson's working, and there is a part for you. And he wasn't even my agent. And then, sure enough, I showed up. You did. You were the, you were the guy. And you and Jeff had stayed sort of hooked yes. up since senior Yeah, we'd stayed good trip. friends since senior trip. I actually moved below him when I moved out here to That's do the exactly series. That's exactly right. I yeah. bought the, 
Yeah, the we lived on top of each other uh, well, while we were so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Not that there's anything. I can't wrong say with anything. That. Hey, it's Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, for the remainder of the episodes that we shot, uh, we were neighbors. Oh, that's funny, Lauren. Do you remember coming in for your audition? Yeah, I remember re- sitting down and reading the Andarco and Celine scene where I explained oh, at the table. It's a remembrance of Andarco and Celine, a male and female who lived a long time ago and sacrificed themselves to save millions. We try to live by their example. Did I have that all worked out in the audition? Probably. You were one I of the. Did. You were probably of all of the actors sitting here, the one that was always the most prepared. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. She was wonderful. And how old? How old were you when we started? I think I was eleven in yeah. the pilot. Oh my God. <laughs> then I must have been twelve during the series. Turned twelve during the series. And then you outgrew your first head. <clears throat> Did. But that's true. Rick had to Rick Stratton had to keep making new heads, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. For, for every every movie of the week, I think. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. Oh. How many? I how think many? during the ser- series as well. Really? Yeah. Really? really? I had two heads because the first one looked like a penis. <laughs> right? What? Yours? I think I remember. Yeah. They did. They redid mine three times too. But not for that reason. <laughs> Well, I've never been sure, Rick, and you can tell the truth now, whether you had particularly designed it that way, Rick. All I remember is we had, like, uh, four weeks to do everything from scratch and get into shooting this thing. So it's like whatever shape went on there, and I sculpted his head, so I know. Uh, Maybe it was something subconscious. subconscious. So it wasn't because I was a dick. (laughs) <laughs> or a dickhead. Or a dickhead. Dick <laughs> well, I, I was a shithead, so... You know, Sykes, uh, I was wasn't, shithead. Yeah, wasn't that Sykes? Sh- Sykes, 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 excrement, excrement and cranium. cranium. Terry, do you remember your audition? Oh, yeah. I walked in and you had me read for um, your part. Oh. And then about halfway through... Uh, literally halfway through the page, you stopped me and you said, No, 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 no. Here, <laughs> take this, go out there, look at it for as long as you want, and then come back. And I thought, oh, I've so screwed this up. <laughs> <gasps> oh, I'm just, I might as well leave. Did you think, Kenny, did you think that it was just a, what, a vision that you had when she was reading it that you made her stop? I'm like Ed Wood. I, I have these visions. You know? <laughs> and wear cashmere beautiful. And wear cashmere. You see me in cashmere. <laughs> but what happened when you came back in then? Well, then you read with me, and we just had such a good time. And we, <laughs> and we were, and I don't know, it just, there was something about her, and I got some kind of little physical feeling for how she stood and how she moved and we had a great time we read like two scenes and i laughed and we left and also she came in with that fountain of red hair you know and i mean i'm just a sucker for red hair. <laughs> so the first thing you do is you put a head on it that's right yeah, yeah it's gonna cover it all up <laughs> gary you were you were one of the last to be cast cast I was think, i gary. yeah and you were running out of time so you had to get it done quickly so i i, I remember being yanked out from the street just get in here and say this okay gary uh we really need Sykes to come in and take charge of the room. Okay. So I'll walk there. All right. Okay. Everybody get here. You sit over here. I'm going to sit over here. Okay. And just move and stuff like that. You remember that? Yeah, I do. And then I, and I said, uh, okay, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd like to take just a moment, if I could, to, to prepare. And went, <laughs> okay. Let's go. And you hired him anyway? He did anyway. <laughs> no, it was great. Gary brought exactly the, the qualities that I was looking for to it. <laughs> And nobody had the instant connection with it that you did. That's absolutely true. You and I have a connection that goes back before that that I didn't wasn't aware of. That's right. That's why you hired me because I had worked on Incredible Hulk. Yes, I hadn't realized that Gary had been on the show because I didn't direct that episode. What did you do on that? I have the distinction of being the only guy in history to have ever dosed uh, David Banner and then have him Hulk out while he's coming on to LSD. That just sounds like a big Friday night. And the reason that I called you for, for this was because not only were you a, a really classically trained actor at a Catholic university, right? Right. Right. But I also knew that Rick was going to have to be putting this guy into a head, you know, every day practically for nine months. And I thought, oh, I've got to have a guy that's not only a wonderful actor, but that also has a zen factor that can, uh, you know, that can deal with it. I have to tell you, when I got that head on, I couldn't believe that I was going to have to be in it. <laughs> every day for nine months I don't think because any of it was it was so hard you well, know I to just the first the couple of days it was three hours to yeah. get the head on i felt like he was you had to yell at me in order for me to know my cue what to say or i'd watch his lips really closely okay he stopped like now i, can I thought you were just really attracted to my mouth <laughs> yeah i know and i had to clear that up really quickly <laughs>
<laughs> Wait, uh, didn't you tell me though you like kissing him? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, he's a great kisser. Yeah, yeah. I told me that. I, I heard well, I that. couldn't tell you that because then it would be like you know, because <laughs> <laughs> then it would be you know, your head would get much bigger than mine. <laughs> And it was there already, so I just didn't want to inflate Number it anymore. Number one in the bullshit. No, listen. <laughs> and then finally, we convinced them to cut little bitty well, holes there. Well, some people didn't even want their... Well, you didn't, because you thought that was better for your character, but I couldn't hear a thing. So I had to lip read everybody. That made me look kind of slow. Yeah, it, it, uh, it also drove the first ADs crazy, crazy on the set, because Jeff would go into Albert world, you know. And wander and, off. And wander off. And we couldn't find him no, anywhere. Right, and they'd be calling for him, and Benita said, I'm going to kill all of them. Well, a lot these of women looked so beautiful. They did. Didn't they? they? Gorgeous. Maybe. I think I look much better just, bald. I, I like my. You look spectacular, Bob. Because after the show was over and I would go in for auditions, people looked so disappointed when they'd see me. <laughs> well, not only that, I'm they serious, wouldn't know who you were. They said, I thought oh. you were. Well, a, that you know, would, I remember Michelle without a head coming onto the set a few times oh, and the yeah, crew was saying, Excuse me, lady. They had no idea. <laughs> me who, too. This were is they me. hot? Yes. Uh, oh, hot. It was oh. like a lake of water. Oh. I would squeeze and I could no. feel the water, oh. you know, oh. shooting oh. up. And it would settle down and go down down the back of Didn't our you neck. open it up and let it out, let it drain? Are you kidding? Okay, Terry's draining her head again. Yeah, when we went, that was oh. the most gratifying that's, moment that's of the day when you could day. grab she the back of that talk. head and rip it open and that's just so let your head but breathe. That's so wrong. Am I remembering right or did I did I see you a couple of times with hair dryers aiming in the holes? Yeah, we'd open up the holes and they put try to put cool air in there. And when Eric did it, it actually blew out the other ear. No, I think Rick's right. It would, what would it do? The whole head would just kind of swell. And swell. <laughs> now, did we, we have it? Like the thing effect. is, we would sweat so much because this was so hot, yeah. then we would start to sweat so much that the edges of the makeup would start mm -hmm. to come off. And once once that happens, it starts to get harder and harder and harder as the day goes on to oh, repair it. Yeah. Was there ever an actor who freaked and couldn't do the show? Eric. Yeah. Eric. 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 Did, oh, you I had a couple of moments. Yeah. There was a lot of activity, and somebody was trying to tell you, and we were trying to get lines together, and you, I saw you just kind of glaze out, and just you were, you were just like this. Yeah.